We're doing top 10 sports movies with my special guest, Mark Rodriguez. What's up? Hi, thanks for tuning into the Tom Patelson Show. With me is Mark Rodriguez. We're doing our top 10 sports movies. Mark is owner and host of the Rodriguez Project podcast and YouTube show and chairman and CEO of Mastermind Media. And I've known you for 20 years. <laughs> That's right. I wore a sports shirt. Yes, you did. I was, I was picking out what I was going to wear today. And I was like, well, I'm doing a sports. Uh, let's do Jordan. You got to do Jordan. Do a Jordan thing. I'm wearing my traditional no shirt, a black shirt with nothing on it. That's it. The yes, whole thing. Sure. Was this was this list difficult for you? I had such a great time doing this. I didn't think I, when you first asked me, I was like, okay, it's going to be kind of difficult. It was not that difficult, um, but I think you were going to hate my number one. I think you're going to hate that I made my number one my number one. I'm going to hate it. You're going to hate it. Okay, good. Because that's all I wanted to hear. Because I made, I started looking for movies, and then I was like, okay, I'll just write down a bunch of movies I can remember. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the internet to type in sports movies for the ones I knew I would forget. And before you know it, I had a list of 23 movies. Yeah. So stay to the end of the video. We're going to post our video. We're going to post further into the list, but we're only going to give you our top 10. But you're going to get a lot of other movies at the end, because I know there's some movies that you're going to love that you think we missed. Yes. We didn't. There's so many of these movies. You want to jump in? Let's do it. Give me number 10. Number what do you have? 10. All right. So number 10 for me, I love the story, but I also love the story behind the movie. Okay. 1976, Rocky is my number 10. That's a great pick. That is a great boxing pick. I love Rocky. That is an absolute, and the first Rocky. Yes, the first Rocky, uh, Sylvester Stallone, wrote the film, wanted to star in it. The studios didn't want him to, so they offered him $265,000 not to star because they wanted like James Caan or um, there was a couple others that the studio wanted, but he said no. Yep, that would, that would be $1.4 million today is how much basically they offered him. He said no, he starred in it, and it won Picture of the Year. It won Best Picture versus some stellar nominees versus Taxi Driver, Barry Lyndon, All the President's Men. I mean, and I think Network was up that year, and Rocky won. A fantastic love story. Uh, oh, I love Rocky. It's so great good. pick. That's a great pick. Thanks. All right. What's your number 10? Number 10 comes from the year 2020, and it chronologues the, it chronologues the Chicago Bills from 1997. It is a 10-part miniseries movie, The Last Dance. Wow. I my love documentary that. picture. Now you've seen the last. You want to wear the shirt? I do want to wear the shirt. No. <laughs> uh, I was hooked from from episode one, episode ten, never a break. I was like, it's so much material, but all the interviews, all of the rich, in-depth story. I went right back there and growing up in that era and being, you know, being just out of college and starting my life as a real adult dude. I mean, The Last Dance is a wonderful movie. It is a wonderful movie. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. I love. I feel so lucky that I was able to experience Jordan growing up, and that was like the first time getting into sports. And some of my neighbors loved Michael Jordan, so they were older than me, so I loved him too. And uh, and watching that had so many flashbacks. I love how they made it, and I love how they did the reaction shots with uh, with the with the iPad. And he'd be watching them and see oh, his yeah. reaction. Oh, he'd, he'd watch he'd m m watch Michael Jordan uh, listen to Dennis Rodman tell stories, yeah. which is so good. Yeah, I remember. I remember when they weren't winning; they couldn't win the big one, and they kept saying, "Well, Jordan can't win the big one; he'll never yeah. top the Lakers." Yeah, it was yeah. A big team. Magic Johnson's Lakers were huge. Back and then, then. The, the bad boys were roughing him up, so he had to get in the gym. They did. And um, and uh, his trainer actually has a really great book about it. Michael coming to him, or he came to the, the Bulls, and um, Tim S. Grover, I think is his name, and uh, and just hearing his work ethic and being able to see it. Sometimes I'll just put it on at the studio. Well, the team's working, so if, you, if they glance up, they see greatness. Just to be in those good vibes. Absolutely love that pick. Number 10. Number 9. All what right. do you got? Number 9. Maybe I should just memorize these in. All right. I think this is I think this is a perfect film. Million Dollar 
baby. Oh. It's my number nine. This is best picture, and then this is another best picture. I start in the, the top 10 with two number uh, two best pictures. Uh, Clint Eastwood, Hilary Swank, Morgan Freeman. Uh, it's a great pick and a great picture in one of those movies that I can't watch ever again. It's so heartbreaking. It is such a gut wrencher. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Did you, I, I heard as I was doing research for this uh, today, I stayed up all night. Um, I heard that some people were upset because they thought it was politically charged, that they were trying to make a case for euthanasia. I guess you could argue that, but it, I, I don't read that into there. What I do read into that, that among uh, villains goes, I love uh, The Wrath of Khan, Ricardo Monteblan, and of course I love Darth Vader. But yeah. Hilary Swank's family is oh the biggest God. villains of any of, oh, oh, wow. oh, I want them to die in a bus crash. Yeah, yeah, they did. They, they did. Is that how it ends? <laughs> no. Oh, the tongue scene. That is, oh. a, that is a great pick. Wow. Million Dollar Baby is a great pick. Give me your number nine. Number nine, I'm going to the list. Mm -hmm. Number nine was going to be on my list and was going to be higher, this and that. Is one of those movies I always have to have on in the background. I find it so enriching. I find it so wonderful. But mainly I'm watching it for one moment. I'm watching it to see James Earl Jones give his monologue about baseball. This is 1989's Field of Dreams. Yes. When he says, they will come, Ray, they will come. They won't know why. They'll get in their cars and they'll drive across. And it's just like, I'm just, I'm, I'm so, I'm so all about that. Oh, Field of Dreams with Kevin Costner and Ray Liotta and James Earl Jones and, uh, oh boy. Yeah, that's something I, I even say now, like in the entrepreneurship world is like, if you build it, they will come, which I still think there is some truth to it. Sure. But it's such an iconic movie. It feels, that's what I love about these older movies. I love that, like, I don't know if it's the quality or how like HD things are getting, but it's almost like, it's like secure in its own little world and it feels like it's real. Yeah. And uh, just, yeah, the whole, the whole story, I, I watched it again recently, maybe in the last like two years and it still holds up. And I was like, wow, this is, this is brilliant writing. And I love it because it's a science fiction style yeah, epic, yeah. a fantasy thing, a, a never, a, a wonderful land where people can come back from the dead to play baseball, how it unites us as a family and this is big moments and of course at the end and you know, spoiler alert, it's if you build it, he will come. He will come, yes. And his father comes to ease his pain. Oh. oh. Tear jerker. Oh. Number nine, Field of Dreams. Great pick. Indeed. Great pick. Number eight. All right. Um, I don't usually have this one on in the background, but <laughs> I, uh, I love this movie. It was in 1999. When was that one? Uh, 89. 89. I love uh, this film, 1999, and I think a big reason is because I was actually going through high school at the same time it came out. I just started 1999's Varsity Blues. Yeah. Uh, man, Varsity Blues was was one of those one of those movies. It just felt like high school was like the the underdog story and him with his dad, and everything. The football scene where he throws it at, at his dad, he hit the beer can off his head, but it hits his dad in the face because he wanted to. Uh, man. That's a great pick, and those are great. I mean, those are those movies that bring you back to that era. Like for me, being our differences in ages, uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High yeah. makes me think yeah. about junior high, makes me think about middle school. You know, when I think about those things. Uh, the Breakfast Club makes me think of high school, even yeah. it's the same. But yeah, Varsity Blues brings you right back to that. Yeah, home. right back to that. I remember like, yeah, like the, the, they go to the strip club and their, their, uh, their teacher's a stripper. I'm like, oh my God, and I, go, <laughs> I go to school the next day and I'm like, uh, yeah, none of my teachers I wanted to see naked. None. No apologies. <laughs> number eight, Varsity Blues. Number, number eight. eight. Number eight came from 1976. We already said a bunch. It is Rocky. Mmm. Rocky is still, it is one of my favorite movies, and it is my favorite movie. I was saving this part until I was talking about it, uh, is the end. When Rocky is crying for Adrian. He's like, I, I don't care who won. Like, and as a kid, that's tough to deal with. Yeah, yeah, when the yeah. hero doesn't win the match, you know, and Rocky yeah. loses in Rocky 1, in Rocky. Uh, he is just, he's screaming for Adrian. He's like, I don't care, I don't care about a rematch. And he's calling for Adrian, and then, uh, yeah. Uh, How is he calling for Adrian? What does he sound like? Because uh, when you say Adrian, I don't know. When you say Adrian, he says, no, I don't get Adrian! No, <laughs> Adrian! <laughs> Yeah, and then Burt Young lets, oh, lifts up the rope to let Adrian inside, and then they rush to each other and say, I love you. Oh, it uh, gets me every time. Yeah, just there's so many lines in that. Oh, that it gets me every time. It, it, like, just, you know, goes right over to life as well. Oh. Yeah, Rocky. Oh. 
See, numbers. I, but that's the thing. Rocky could go 10, could go 7, could go, it could arguably go number one best uh, of all time. It is a. But this is our list. It is a wonderful sports movie. And yeah, don't hate on us when we don't say your pick. But we're getting there. Number seven. And if you are going to hate, uh, hate on us, do it in the comments. Yeah, like uh, and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> all right, number seven, going back to the list. All right. I think this is another thing, like, because of the age that I was at during it. It was 1993's Rookie of the Year. Low, like, you know, childhood favorite. Every kid wants to be in the majors, especially when I was younger. It was like baseball was everything. I'm not sure what it's like now. It's like gaming. Let me, let me make sure this is good. Do it effect. Rather make it awkward versus not, you know, everything on the sound. No, totally. Um, so yeah, so 1993, Rookie of the Year, breaks his arm and goes into the majors. It's every kid's dream. Uh, what's his name that played, um, he's like, um, he played Marv in, in Home Alone, and he's also in this, he's the... Uh, Daniel Stern. Yeah. <laughs> Hot Ice, the best of both worlds. <laughs> That's one of those, uh, it's, it's the dream of every kid who brings his, brings his mitt to the ball game. Yeah. He's like, damn. Our center fielder broke his leg. Hey, kid, you've got a mitt. Can you play? Come down here. Like, that's what every kid wants. Like, that's the dream. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so being able to see that and then see how his life, his, like, his at-home life is and everything. Uh, I just thought of another one, but it's not on my list. But we'll put it on. It's going to happen all the time. Yeah. Like, once you said Rookie of the Year, I was like, no, nah, it's not on my list, but mad respect for Rookie of the Year. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm going to it. Number seven. Number seven came out in the year 2000, and I had to check this. I didn't know when it was set. It was set in 1971, and if you'd have asked me, I thought it would have been set in the mid to late 60s, so I'm not com completely off, but it stars Denzel Washington and Will Patton. It is Remember the Titans. Oh, remember the Titans. Love Remember the Titans. It is a very, uh, it, it is a, well, if you've seen it already, of course you already know how great it is as a football movie and to talk about segregation in schools yeah. and how it can be a healing process and how they rise uh, above things to, to become a team as well as to love each other as people regardless of the color of their skin. My goodness, it's fantastic. Yeah, they brought some, like, some nice elements of like some, some comedic moments. Hayden Penetier was like the young little girl yeah. in that and her relationship with her father. That is another one of those perfect films, man. Um, and I, I love, I mean, anything with sports, I think that's why like, I was excited about this. I feel like sports just transfers over to life in so many great ways. Are you just learning how to lose and overcome things? And that one, you know, cause you see there's, there's films being made today, but like that was, that film sticks out as like another one of those perfect films. It's a job well done. Yeah, well done. Love Love the Titans. That's your, where we at? Number, uh, uh, number, number seven. seven. Okay. Yes. Number six, you know, <clears throat> I always, uh, whenever I'm talking about my favorite movies, I always go drama. I don't go comedies. I'm stopping that today. My number six is from 2006. Let me make sure that's right. 2006? I'm, I'm, I'm racking the brain. What's Will Ferrell and John C. Riley, Talladega Nights. Talladega Nights. Talladega Nights <laughs> is such a great <laughs> sports film. No, no, it isn't. <laughs> it is so great. I usually take comedies off, but the le level of improvisation and uh, Sasha Baron Cohen coming in and his character, I absolutely, I could watch it anytime. I use it to watch and see how they structure things and uh, just how they really like gimmicked the, uh, the NASCAR world. As far as NASCAR movies, I'll put it above Days of Thunder. You didn't, so you didn't like it? Uh, it's... You don't like it or is it too like goofy? It is a little too goofy, a little too unrealistic, but once you buy into that, it becomes like Anchorman or uh, Step yeah, yeah, exactly. or any yeah. other Will Ferrell movies. You're like, okay, you just gotta let some stuff go. Yeah, and then enjoy but that's the how ride. I, with, so I think that's why, like, I thought you would be able to let go because with sci-fi, you're, you're usually I need things to be more grounded, and uh, so I thought letting go. I mean, that's very interesting that you uh, that you don't like it as much as I do. Well, both Happy Gilmore and Caddyshack are on my list, but they're not beneath the ten. But those are two movies that are about golf. Kinda. Yeah, yeah. You know, that gol golf's involved, but you know, yeah. I think Caddyshack was 14 or something. You'll see it at the end. Mm -hmm. We'll post it at the end. We'll post all the movies at I'll the end. I'll say at the end. So that was, uh... That was number six. <laughs> number number six. six. Give me a number six. Number six. When I graduated college in 1992, I took a course that final semester called American Baseball History. 
which I thought was going to be a breeze for one of my last classes of a uh, college career. And it was one of the most difficult and enriching and fascinating classes I ever took. Because mm -hmm. what it was, to look at American history through the lens of baseball. We didn't talk about staff, we didn't talk about innovations, we talked about people that played it and how it affected the American culture. And during that class, I saw a movie that came out in 1988, so it was four years old already. It stars John Cusack, D.B. Sweeney, and Charlie Sheen, uh, talking about the 1919 Chicago Black Sox series. The movie is Eight Men Out. Wow. Which is a great movie, and I think at the time, I don't know if it's still the case, I'll post it right here if it's still the case, that you can't get a throwback jersey from the 1919 Chicago White Sox. Interesting. Because eight men were approached by Arnold Rothstein and some other gamblers to toss the World Series versus the Cincinnati Reds, and did so. And that's the whole, that's the, that's the movie? That's the movie. Wow, I've never even heard of it. Shoeless Joe Jackson. Is, uh, is the most famous member of the Hall of Fame who's not in the Hall of Fame because he's supposedly through the World Series. Wow. I think he's still third in batting averages and in steals and things, but Shoeless Joe is not. Is Shoeless the Joe in, uh, do they talk about him in Field of Dreams? Yeah, Shoeless Joe Jackson is played by Ray Liotta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Joe, I don't know why they bring that up when we're talking about Field of Dreams. Why are you only waiting for this? Shoeless Joe Jackson is on my list twice. <laughs> Anything uh, with Shoeless Joe Jackson, top 10. Top 10. Shoeless Joe, on the list. Boom. <laughs> but Eight Men Out. If you haven't seen Eight Men Out, please go and see Eight Men Out. Please go and see. Please rent. Rent. Please hit the button on your machine and let it appear in front of the television. After we finish the list. After we finish the list. Don't stop watching it to watch it. Watch it later. And before we move on, here's a quick little, quick little brief moment with Shoeless Joe. <laughs> we'll, be back. We're, we'll be back in a minute. Let's take a quick deep dive here in the middle of the countdown. This came up uh, the day after I shot with Mark and I realized uh, of all my friends that I shoot with and me included when I come up with my list, it is so very important the when you saw the movie and how a movie can immediately take you back to that place, to that moment in time when you first saw it. And I talk about this a lot about music. I've mentioned this before about music. The music of your coming of age years from age 13 to 19 will forever have a hold on you. Forever. And anytime you hear one of those songs, you go right back. And that's what movies do to all of us. Um, that's, yeah, that is the essence of the art form as known as film, which I'm going to call movies because film sounds so pretentious. You know, we love going to movies. It takes us back, it remembers those, it, you, you have those remembrances of those moments. And when you're a kid, when you don't have any moments to remember because you're young, movies give you hope. Hope of everything. Gives you hope of a future of what your life will be like when you're those characters on the screen. It brings you hope when you're young and it brings you joyful remembrances when you're old. All right, enough of that deep dive. Let's get back to the countdown. All right, we're back. We're back. We're back from the Shoeless Joe extravaganza, mm -hmm. and I'm ready for number five. Give me number five. Right. What do you got? I got another 1996 classic. You've actually already mentioned it today, and you spoke ill of it. I, I don't know if I did. I'm going another comedy. I'm going comedy to comedy, back to back. Happy Gilmore. I didn't speak ill of it. I love Happy Gilmore, but it's not in my top 10. The reason it's in my top 10 is because it was when, when I saw it, it was something like we've never seen before. If, I think Billy Madison was first, right? Billy Madison was his first. And then Happy Major Gilmore. Movies. Yeah, so then he, it was just this new thing. I think very similar to everything else I've been saying. It's like the time that I saw it and when it was and like the group of friends, like that's all we did back then was really watch, play sports, watch movies, go to school. Right. Um, but I loved Happy Gilmore. Just the way he's like, the fact that you could do something that then every, you couldn't go to a golf course without somebody doing the, the wind up. I like how it makes fun of golf. Mm -hmm. It's like, because golf needs to have, golf has a big chip on its shoulder for being golf and having country yeah. club and being expensive. And so it's, you know, there's no inner city kids playing golf. It's too expensive and ridiculous. Yeah. So I like, you know, someone that has no money, has never played before, shops away at golf. I love that part. Yeah. That's and it's, great. It's hard to put Bob Barker in a film and make it work, and he executed that. Yes, and Bob Barker being funny, Bob Barker, that was really uh, well done. 
after all the, yeah, like, make sure your dogs are spayed and neutered and all that stuff, and then to come on there and like with his classic lines, and then, yeah, chubs, and like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Um, but I can see where you're coming from, but for me, yeah, seeing which, which one of these movies really stayed with me, and I can watch that all the time. And the writing in it is is really brilliant. Yeah. You watch it, pal. I eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast. <laughs> you eat pieces of shit for breakfast. Yeah. Do you think it was hard for him to um, do other roles after he did that because he was such an iconic villain in that film? I can't remember him playing other things other than villains, but you're right. That did kind of typecast him. Yeah, yeah. And he's so good. That's perfect. Whose name I can't remember, yeah. but it's right here. There it is. There is him. That's him. He's amazing. Oh, he's a great name. That number five. It's a great name. Stop staring at his name. He's gonna make himself conscious. <laughs> number five, 1996, Happy Gilmore. Hit me. Number five. Came about the 2001. is an HBO movie directed by Billy Crystal, which discusses the breaking of Babe Ruth's 60 home runs in a season record. During that year, uh, during this year of the movie, Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris were attempting to break it. The movie is called 61 with an asterisk. It's called 61. It stars Thomas Jane and Barry Pepper uh, as Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris who are chasing this record, this haunted record. Like you can't, you can't beat Babe Ruth's record because, right. and especially in the house that Ruth built and they're both Yankees. What was Babe Ruth's record at the time? 60 home runs 60. in the season. And this was 61 with an asterisk yeah. because... The asterisk is because they had more games. Mm -hmm. They had more expansions teams. And the argument was, well, Babe Ruth didn't have to play at night. Mm. Babe Ruth didn't have to fly on a plane. Babe Ruth didn't have any double headers. You know, it's like there's all this argument. And then recently, I think within the last 25 or 30 years, the asterisks had been removed. Oh, wow. Now a season is a season. Yeah, yeah. And now Barry Bonds had crushed the 61 record. Well, at first it was what, Sammy Sosa and Mark, Mark McGuire. Mark McGuire and like Sammy Sosa. Three or seventy-two, something in the seventies, wasn't it? Oh, Mark McGuire. Yeah. No, yeah. that was in nineteen ninety-nine. No, uh, how many home runs they were hitting? Wasn't it in the seventies? Like uh, Seventy, like how many actual home runs? They I don't think he got to seventy at the time, mm -hmm. but Mark McGuire is in the film. Oh, really? Because they show how it parallels and how they talk about uh, Roger Maris's family was still alive. Roger had passed on, but it is great. Sixty-one is number five. I have a couple movies to watch this you weekend, do. which I love. I love jumping back into some of these films, especially if you're recommending them. Come no. on. Number four. Number four was recently remade. It was, I just want to make sure the years are right, 1992. White men can't jump. Show me two. Show me a, a, a better uh, dynamic between two actors, and I'll show you a liar. That is my. <laughs> that is my buddy. That is one of my buddy movies when Ko and I did our buddy buddy movies. Oh yeah. Twice not on my list because I think it's about con men more about basketball, but it's absolutely about basketball. Why they can't jump is a spectacular movie. Anything with gambling in it, I'm in it. Anything with hustling, I love it. I love all the, oh, I didn't pay. What do you do with the money if you get it? Do you do, you do anything special if you get money if, from gambling? Yeah, you just keep on playing more. Play do, you, more. do you go to Sizzler? <laughs> do you go to Sizzler? Wait. You don't know the line? Oh, is that from the movie? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We go to Sizzler. We go to Sizzler. I did it in my other video. Now I got to do it here. I, uh, <laughs> you did do that in the other one? Or, oh, yeah. He always has to. When... I'm going to do it all. If white men can't jump, it's things I'm doing that we're going to Sizzler thing. Um, I'll take uh, uh, fruits that end it, or that start with Q. <laughs> oh, that's uh, Jeopardy in there. It's Rosie Perez, right? Rosie Perez, yeah, yeah. She's like, I know. Oh, she knows this one. She knows this one because she knows Keish. Yeah, yeah. These two guys who are playing uh, Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrelson are playing con men who uh, who grift basketball. Meanwhile, it's Woody Harrelson's girlfriend played by Rosie yeah, Perez. Yep. Is a genius. Uh. It's like a genius. You know, it's like. Yeah, she's yeah. gonna win all the money. Yeah, I just love, and like the whole setup is so perfect. The fact that they're gonna, you know, run the game and all that. They're like, hey man, you know, Wesley Snipes is like, you know, pick you guys, we'll, we'll play for however much, but then you pick my, my partner. And they see the white dude over there in the corner. He's like, okay, we'll take him. Like, come on, man. Give him the chump. Yeah, <laughs> give him the chump. <laughs> ah, brilliant setup. And, Billy uh, Hope. Uh, um, absolutely, that's a, what a great That's setup. great movie. Yeah, this is the one. I knew the system. Number four? Is this number four? This is number four. Hit me. Number four came out in 2019. Ooh. I see your Talladega Nights and I raise you Ford versus Ferrari. 
Oh. Ford vs. Ferrari with Matt Damon and Christian Bale, who play uh, who played Carol Shelby and Ed, 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 what's his name? Miles? Miles? Ken Miles. Carol Shelby and Ken Miles in Ford Racing Team's attempt to win Le Mans, oh, Le Mans away from Ferrari. Mm. It is a it's a fantastic racing movie. I think it's it's got to be my favorite. It's my favorite racing movie because it's number four. Uh, it is so good. It gives. It's difficult to have a movie about car racing give you the feeling of speed while you're seated. Well, if you're not first, you're last. You know, if you're not. Talladega Nights, unbelievable. Uh, Shake and bake. Yeah, you need you need to feel like you're going fast, like yeah. the Fast and the Furious movies. Say what you want, but the very first Fast and the Furious, you feel the speed of the car. You leave the theater and you want to drive fast home. You want to drive fast home. Ford versus Ferrari, exactly the really? same. Oh, it's very. Did good. you did you like NASCAR growing up? No. No. I tried to get into it a couple times. I've never seen uh, Ford versus Ferrari. Um, I didn't have that much interest in it, but it felt like, I don't know why it didn't really, I don't know, attract me in, in that way. But You're a big Christian Bale fan. I love Christian Bale, he's my favorite He's my favorite actor, but I guess within this kind of story, maybe it was just a story, um, but it also kind of feels like, did you did you watch Air? Yeah. Yeah? It's, I loved Air. Yeah, Air was solid. It was exactly what it needed to be. Maybe not an Academy Award winning film, but it was exactly what, it, it was a, what a great story. It had a great clip, it. it kept moving. Yeah. I love all the 80s references and the 80s song and the 80s montages and all of that stuff. But yeah, absolutely add Ford versus Ferrari to your list because you will love it. Have you seen every film that I've talked about so far? Yes. I've not seen uh, Varsity Blues in quite some time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But that's, that's more like that. I've got three films to watch. Number three. We're not surprised, though. No. I haven't seen some of your films. <laughs> no. I'm actually very surprised that a lot of your, I think more of your films are current, more current than mine. That's you true. a couple that are, you know, after 2000. Well, not everything comes out in the 1970s, although, uh, yeah, I have a lot of 1970s movies on my list. From right. now. I don't know if you've ever heard of this one, but my number three is Remember the Titans. In the year 2000. Oh, good. I uh, I loved the film. I know we talked about it a little bit earlier, um, but uh, but yeah, uh, it's 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 a wonderful film. That's all we really need to say. I think we tie that one up in a. We did. We did the whole thing on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my number three. The pick. My number three is Jonah Hill's best performance. Mm -hmm. I Jonah love, Hill's I love. Uh, What's it called? Jonah Hill's best performance from 2011 with Brad Pitt. It is Moneyball. Great film. Moneyball is a is a wonderful movie about the changing of American baseball and how it is viewed on a statistics point of view on what it takes to win games. Brad Pitt pays, plays uh, Billy Bean, who's the manager, uh, not the manager, uh, the, uh, it's not the manager. Philip Philip Seymour Hoffman. Is the manager. Hoffman plays the manager. Let's see what is he doing? Is he the owner? He's not the owner, is he? He's the general exec. I can't remember. He's running everything like that. So yeah, uh, yeah. And so he's got to build a team with no money. And Jonah Hill comes along playing a character who's a bunch of different characters in an amalgamation of the actual real world yeah. of this different system of how to pick players and how not to pick on what they look like, on how tall they are, about certain things. Just, you know, yeah, it breaks. Oh, yeah, Moneyball. Statistic. Moneyball is so great. I love I love it. It was on my it, it was on my list just a little bit after uh, number 10. I, and I almost put it in there. I just had to see which ones really impacted me. Um, but Moneyball was up there. And that was the movie that if Jonah Hill wasn't on your radar as being a versatile actor, now he was. He's so good. Yeah. He's so he's so straightforward, so believable, so honest. He's not doing any kind of crazy thing. I love, a lot of people love him in Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, love him that too. But in Moneyball, um, he's just he's perfection. It's yeah, great. I love Moneyball. Love Moneyball. All right, we're getting down to the top two. Number two. Oh boy. Mm. Number two for me comes from 1993. A terrific ensemble cast. And I actually thought you were going to say it earlier because you mentioned James. Earl Jones. This is 1993 Sandlot. Oh, my number two. Sandlot's on my list. It's it's way up there. It's it is a people people love this movie a whole yeah, lot. I think I saw it. It was probably I think one of my first 
you know, movie theater goes as a kid. Um, I was eight when it came out. And uh, I mean, baseball, again, was life, especially back then. But like, and your first crush, and Wendy Peppercorn, and like, you got squints. And then uh, You're killing me, Smalls. Uh, and my last name is Rodriguez, and Benny the Jet Rodriguez. I was like, okay, I guess I'm I'm that. Give me the PF Flyers. I'm ready. Oh yeah, and then at the at the very end, when they show what happens to two of them, and one becomes the announcer, and the other one becomes an actual player, and it's like let the let the waterworks go. It's the perfect ending. Just let the waterworks go, and not to mention when they save the dog, when they save. Uh, Hercules. Hercules, who's called who's called the Beast. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When they save Hercules under that, and then the he, the dog reveals all of the balls he's been burying, and it's like, oh jeez. And then James Earl Jones again, being James Earl Jones. Yeah, and like, uh, yeah. Why would you just ask me? I would have gotten it for you. you just asked me. I would have gotten it for you. Tell <laughs> well, you what. Well, then we wouldn't have a movie. Yes. Wait, what does he call? It? What is Babe's real name? Babe Ruth's real name. He's like, oh. Uh, oh, I can't remember Babe Ruth's real name. Uh oh, it's right here. Uh, another great name. Another great name. That is a great name. That. But he says, "I'll tell you what. If you if you boys come back once a week to talk baseball, yeah. you can list." Oh, James Earl Jones. Uh, actually, oh, I the Sandlot's a great movie. What's Babe Ruth's real name? This is a there's a lot of break here, even though it's printed. Mm -hmm. Alexa, what is Babe Ruth's real name? Somebody tell. George? George yes. Herman Ruth. Yes, George Herman Ruth. George Herman Ruth. The Sultan Swat. The Sandlot. Number two, give me number two. Number two, um, through Mastermind Media, which you run, yeah. you have a podcast on there from a group of fellas called The Compadres, and yes. I've been a guest on their show. One of their members is named Joe, and this is one of Joe's favorite movies. It is from 2003. It involves horse racing starring Jeff Bridges, Tobey Maguire, and Chris Cooper. It is the amazing Seabiscuit. Wow. Seabiscuit. What a great film. Story about a bunch of nobodies, a bunch of plucky underdogs during the Depression era who buy a racehorse who's supposed to be done, and they use a jockey who is too big and supposed to be finished, and they have a trainer who is too old and supposed to be a catastrophe, and they surpass everything to win. It is just so emotionally wonderful. Yeah. Seabiscuit. I haven't seen, what year did that come out? 2003. Oh, I haven't seen it probably since 2003. I need to rewatch that. Oh. Yeah. Do you think that they won it, he was able to win because he was also Spider-Man? I think probably. <laughs> the fact that he was also Spider-Man. Well, I doubt his career in the Cider House Rules helped him at all. You know? And not to mention, the owner of the horse is the Big Lebowski. So, you know, and the dude can help out with, you know, the dude abides. Remake it with just those characters? Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, but yeah, Sea Biscuit. Oh, I love Sea Biscuit. The horse racing in Sea Biscuit. That's, number, that's your number two. You like you like betting the ponies too, somewhat. Are you used to? I do. I'm not into it like I used to be. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah. I love going to the racetrack. I love seeing the horses run. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. Sea Biscuit. Oh, sea Biscuit number two. Wow, that's very surprising. But I think I need to watch it again. And then I'll be like, oh, that you makes should. sense. Yeah. This is number it. Number one. This is the number one. This is the number one favorite sports movie from Rock, Mark Rodriguez, and here it comes. All right. So. If you remember about 23 minutes ago, I said you're going to hate my number one. Okay. Can you tell me what sport it is? Or will I give it away? It might, that will definitely give it away. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> my number one comes from 1998. Stars Matt Damon, Edward Norton, John Malkovich. I'm not going to hate it. Rounders, Rounders. my number one. Texas Hold'em was the biggest thing since, you know, as you guys say, sliced bread. We played Texas Hold'em every day after work for a mm. good 10 years. It's gone now. And there was a million television shows showing people playing Texas Hold'em. It, it was everywhere. Was, I think his name was Chris Moneymaker won in 2003. And I didn't watch rounders until cards exploded and I don't think they, they made it before it exploded rounders is very entertaining I, I didn't know it's if you would consider it a sport that's oh. why further down on my list I have searching for Bobby Fisher which is a chess movie because yeah. I thought it has about yeah. is, are these sports movies or are they competition movies yeah 
but I'll give you Rounders because yeah. it's a wonderful film. It's a great movie. Yeah, was, yeah, so well done. I love the acting and the story and um, and watching it. I used to watch it before going out and play cards. I used to play poker like four or five nights a week. I would go and play house games after my, I would like work a double shift and then go play cards in Michigan. And, um, but also, yeah, just like the iconic character um, John Malkovich plays and- uh, Teddy KGB. And yes, yeah, so like I said before, anything with gambling, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> so, Rounders is my number one. Have you, have you seen the, the interview with Matt Damon talking about uh, John Malkovich? No. It was the first day of shooting and they were getting really excited because John Malkovich is coming, he's got a big aura and whatnot, and they sit across the table and they're shooting one of the ending scenes. And John Malkovich has the take and says, you, you take it because you have my money. And Matt Damon does that impression. And afterwards it's just kind of dead quiet and people are setting up a sound to do another thing. And John Malkovich leans over the table to Matt Damon and says, Oh my God. Which I think is hysterically great. Because the first time you see it, you're like, is John Malkovich really doing that voice? Yeah. But he plays it the entire time. Is, yeah, and it is a bit ridiculous, but it, it somehow works. It works now. Yeah. It's and like, we can't stop quoting it now. You quote, you quote Teddy KGB every time you play cards. Someone's yeah, got to yeah. go, I will splash the pot. We never, in fact, like, please. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rounders is great. Yeah, great just seeing Matt Damon go all in early on and, and lose and like, oh my gosh. Like, because you do, you always remember your bad beats. They talk about that in the, in the, in the, in the film. And uh, just to see him overcome all odds. And the, what I love most is that Matt Damon, he's the straight player. And then Edward Norton comes out of jail and he's got the ace up his sleeve and he can stack the deck. He's the cheap. And uh, seeing like what happens in the two different lifestyles that um, kind of mirror each other and by the end of it, well, yeah, if you haven't seen it. Go and it's it. the two it's the two young men who grew up together and then they split apart. And so they have, you know, yeah. one went this direction, one went the other direction. It's got a great ending. It's, yeah, yeah. Rounders is great. No, I won't hate you I'm, for that. Okay, cool. Don't get me wrong. I hate him for a lot of stuff. <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> number Ooh, one. What's your number one? Wait, 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 wait. I'll give you the sport. Give me the sport. Baseball. I have five baseball movies on my list, and I'm not the biggest baseball fan, but boy, baseball movies are great. Major League? There are, oh, Major League's up on my list, but that's not number one. I love Major League. But imagine if this movie wasn't called Major League. What if it was called Minor League? Mm -hmm. There are very few movies that talk about what it's like in the minor leagues talk about what it's like going into the show, becoming a big player, doing what it takes, uh, just showing up to a ballpark and not being famous and not having that uh, luxury, but still loving the sport for as it is. And it stars Kevin Costner, Susan Sarandon, and Tim Robbins from 1988. It is Bull Durham. Mm -hmm. Bull Durham is my favorite sports movie. I'm not surprised by that. I love Crash Davis, uh, played by Kevin Costner, who is the who's the catcher who has to uh, bring along this brand new pitcher played by Tim Robbins, who's got an incredible fastball and not a thought in his head. And Susan Sarandon plays Annie, who goes to the ballpark every year. And for her, baseball is a religion. It's spiritual. And two people find each other, and then two other people find each other. And it's, a, it's enriching and wonderful. And I love it because it's not about the major leagues. It's yeah. about the minor leagues. Yeah. It's about what it takes to get to some place and be somebody yeah. and love. Yeah, Bull Durham. Oh, I love Bull Durham. Bull Durham, number one. Douglas. I don't think I've ever seen it. So there's like five movies on my list you haven't seen. Here's the thing. So uh, back in the day when we used to bartend together, Brady came in, Brady Smith came in and wrote me a list of movies, and I believe Bill Durham was like at the top. Bull. And I'm, Bull, yeah, well, Bill Durham was the top. Bill, Bill Durham, Durham was a little bit under that one. Sat down the way and recommended yeah. Bull Durham. Bull Durham, yeah, yeah. So I think, I don't know if I've ever, if I ever started or whatnot, but now I have four films to watch, at least, maybe five. Um, but I've heard great things. I know it's an iconic film, it's and it feels like that, based on what I know about it, it doesn't surprise me that it's your number one. Yeah, once you see it, you see my why I like it all over it. It's yeah. absolutely written and sound for that. Yeah. yeah. Well, great list. So we're going to put up right now on the screen uh, my top 23. Is that how many I got? 23? You can see exactly what didn't make my list, but what did make my list. And Mark, you've got 18 on your list? I got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got eight more. You got eight more. Cool. So that'll be up list in front of Mark right now. 
Mark, tell them where they can find you. It's listed right there. Yes, you can find me at Mark Rodriguez TV on all social platforms. That's right. Fantastic. And watch the Rodriguez Project. Yes, every Saturday morning. At the end of uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to go ahead and post uh, where you can click on that and click on links and find Mark and follow him, like and subscribe for Mark. Yes, thank you so much. Fantastic. This was so fun. I love this. Well, we're going to do it again because I'm, I'm really enjoying these top ten lists. And because every time, every time someone says something, and I go, "Oh, damn it! I should put it down on my list. Yeah. That should have been on my list. That's a good pick right there. That's a good pick." Yeah, rounders, put it on your list. Yeah, rounders is going to be on my list. Like and subscribe if you like this content, and hit that notification bell so you know when my stuff drops. It drops on Sunday. Thanks to Mark. Thank you, Mark, for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Until we see you next time, as always, peace, love, live long, and prosper. And I mean it. <laughs>